Hey guys, John here, and to start off this week's Citrus Sound Design Week, I have made a cheesy Titanic flute with a little twist for you, so this is what it sounds like. Alright, if you like the patch, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So let's dive into this thing because it's kind of simplistic, but it's kind of not at the same time. So first things first, let's start off with the oscillator. So generally, kind of speaking, anything to do with any type of wind kind of instrument, you generally generally want to start off with a triangle wave. So operator one is going to be a triangle wave right here. So just out of the presets, it's going to be a triangle wave. It's going to be at the regular volume or the regular ratio, the regular pitch right here. However, keep in mind that on the main tab, I did raise this by one octave or 12 semitones. And we're going to be using order of two right here. The uh, the unison panning is all the way at the top. The volume is 75% and the unison pitch is at 50. You can kind of mess with that later on. But uh, yeah, before we leave this page, there is going to be over sampling. So two times right here. So make sure to check that box or click it and scroll up. So it goes to two times. So what's kind of happening here? So operator one is going to be the main sound of the flute. And there's a couple of things happening here. So first of all, we have this type of movement. And that is happening not with FM, however, with RM. And we're using operator number two to accomplish that. So what's happening in operator number two? So this one here is going to be up one octave from the default. So it's going to be a ratio of four. Now, this might look a little bit strange to you. Now, this was a waveform created in the sine shape harmonics. And it's kind of simple. So here's going to be the first one, which is basically the sine wave, the fundamental. So I went over here. So this would be over here, harmonic 16, and then harmonic 32, and then harmonic 64. So I put all of these harmonics all the way at the top to kind of simulate the motion of the, the movement of the flute a little bit. So as we play the flute, kind of, kind of imagine it's kind of moving. There's a little inconsistencies in the tone. It's not just one pure tone. And we really don't need that much of this. So this right here is going to be probably 61, 62%. So if this is bypassed, that's more so just a tone there. So this adds a little bit more of that motion to it using ring modulation. So I thought to point that out, we haven't really used much ring modulation. I thought this might be a perfect situation to use that in. So aside from that, that's kind of the core aspects of the flute itself. Not to mention this type of flute sound is going to generally be soaked in a lot of reverb. However, for the reverb, I did use my external Vol Hollow. You can use the in-house reverb here if you would like to. I chose to leave that one off here. As you can see, it's not on. Because I think you can kind of experiment with different types of reverb because this sound is really based on a spacious reverb-y kind of room. And one thing to also mention is this operator is going to be sent to filter number one. So if we look at filter number one, I experimented with a lot of different types of filters to really get the kind of tonality right. And it's kind of close. Uh, I end up landing on the low pass over here. So the lime low pass, and it's going to be times one. So this version of the filter, the cutoff is going to be about 36%. Now, this is kind of the most tricky part, I think, of this type of sound because we're dealing with a flute and it's a very in your face sound. It's a very pointy kind of sharp sound. So there's that fine line of cutting off the top end or that the really irritating kind of maybe one to two K kind of sound, but also not compromising it too much. So it's not, it's not too boring. It's not too dark. So that's kind of the hard part. And especially the reverb is going to help wash that out a little bit. So it's not so ear piercing. That's kind of the most challenging part of making this type of high pitched flute. whatever that note was, but yeah. So I think you get the idea for that. So there's gonna be a couple interesting things here. So the envelopes for operator number one is gonna be going to the filter here. So this is gonna be kind of the, the volume envelope. So we have not necessarily a sharp attack, but it kind of fades in. Because if you think of a flute or like a wind type of thing, it's not instantly 100% right there once you hit a note or play a note or blow the note. <laughs> and then, uh, so it's going to be a little bit of a, of a ramp in this shape here. There's going to be a little concave. It's going to have a little bit of decay right here. It's going to sustain right about here and then have a kind of a healthy, uh, 
a, re a healthy release tail, but not too much because remember, this sound is going to be soaked in reverb. So if you have a long tail going into a long reverb, it can really get cluttered pretty quickly. So keep that one in mind. So moving on from there, we talked about operator number two, how that's ring modulating operator number one, kind of giving us that motion. Now, I kind of added a little twist here because if you'd noticed in the beginning when I was playing this, I was do using the modulation X and Y. So generally this sounds like this, right? So it's cool, it's a cool sound, it's got the reverb and all that as well, but I felt like, okay, this is gonna be Titanic, so what is Titanic about? It's about a, a ship in the water, in the ocean. The ocean is obviously water, so it would be kind of cool to be able to almost modulate or move within water, almost kind of simulate that type of effect, which is what X and Y are doing. So operator number three is completely noise, operator four is completely noise with a slider all the way to the top. Now, with that being said, we're going to be using filter two to uh, to use this noise and carve it out with. So let's take a look at filter number two. So filter number two, this is going to be the same envelope as filter number one with a slight longer uh, release time because I didn't want it to be just exact. I wanted that like whooshing, that water sound to be extended a little bit more. So if we look over here, we have the cutoff filter right here. The, as you can see, this light, little, little, small little sliver here. This means that this is activated if you didn't know that. So if you click on this cut here, we can see that mod Y is going to be mapped to this cutoff here. So I, I dragged this left node all the way down and then left the top one in the uh, in the middle here. And then if we go over to this main here, this Y is gonna be controlling that cutoff, which I have it here in the notes. The Y is going to be the filter. And then the X is going to be the noise, so the volume. So basically what I did is operator three and four, since these are gonna be noises, I said over here in the going to filter to the max level that I wanted these things to go once X, this volume control is at the very top. So once X is at 100%, that values can equal whatever value we set here in our matrix. So it's kind of a good way to set a limit because you kind of want a decent loudness, but you don't want it to totally overpower. So you kind of want to keep things a little in their lanes there. So these volumes here are, I think about 50% or so, 49, 50, about there. We don't wanna to go too much because then that's gonna completely wash out the flute and it's just gonna be noise and it can build up over time. So the way that works over here, we go to operator number three and we look at the volume and we go to the mod X. Now this is going to be all the way from the left to the right, all the way to the bottom, going all the way to the top, to the right. So it's kind of following this linear curve of volume. And how does that work? So we, we play a note and if this is the bottom all the way down here, so if we go up and down, this is gonna control the Y, so all the way at the bottom is zero, all the way at the top is 100. And those that Y value, like I said, was mapped to filter number two in the cutoff mod Y. So when we're moving vertically, we're affecting the filter. And when we're moving left and right, this X here, we're controlling the volume. So if I just had this at the bottom here and turned it to the right, that's gonna be our max volume. Now it's gonna be a little low rumbly, and that's because this Y right here is all the way at the bottom, and as, as we increase that, it's gonna open up that filter cutoff. So with that being said, we can kind of play around here and kind of kind of whoosh and whoosh within this little XY graph here to kind of simulate the motion of maybe some type of water, underwater kind of thing, which is why when I played this initially, it started off with just a flute and then the noise kind of comes in. And you can kind of play with it like that. A lot of that modulation is going to be by feel. You can totally automate that by hand, but I think it might be kind of cool if you just press play or record and then kind of automated it on the fly and then kind of seeing how that comes out. So you can kind of get some cool, uh, cool things like that. So while we're on this page here, I definitely did a little bit of EQ. So this middle band here is going to be at about 427 hertz. And we dropped that here by, or the bandwidth 27. And then the gain was about minus five. And then the top end here at about 8K, I brought that up a little bit there to kind of get a little of that clarity out. So just a little bit of EQ move there. You could totally do that post, but I felt like, you know, why not do it here? And then last but not least, we have the effects tab over here. So the effects, there's not too much going on. We have our default chorus. Once I turned it on, I was like, I think this is kind of cool. I didn't feel like I had to change anything with the chorus. Like I said, the reverb is off, but we do have, it looks like we had two delays here. So really the big difference is we have the first one, which is gonna be Pong. So ping pong kind of going left and right. 
the, all these val uh, these values are default except for this time which I dragged from three down to two. And then for number two, this is going to be the default three. So it's kind of the just the default there, except I did the inverted version right here because listening to the sound, we I tried to kind of make it so that this flute wasn't just so predictable. It's kind of washed out with delays and kind of the delays are going to be doing two different things, the different timings and the reverb and the long tail of the flute and the longer tail of the noise. So you're trying to kind of like mess things up and kind of smooth it out make it a little bit more blurry if that makes any kind of sense there. So that's a kind of concept behind this patch in a nutshell. So, and you don't have to just use it for Titanic. It's, you can use it for other stuff too. What was it here? Let's change it over. I think we are in a minor for this example here. You can do stuff like that. And it's kind of cool once you do that whoosh and you kind of move that modulation, we hear those delay throws and we hear that those delay throws going into the reverb. So definitely a kind of cool concept to play around with. You don't just have to do Titanic, although that song is pretty awesome. I mean, come on, you, you got you to gotta give credit where credit is due. So yeah, with that being said, that's pretty much how this patch was created. There is a free link in the video description below if you don't want to dial all this in by yourself. If you want, if you want it just exactly how it is now, you can download it there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. But keep in mind, I did not add the reverb like I mentioned before because I used an external external one. So once you load it up and you say it sounds kind of dry, that's because the only thing that's kind of giving it a little bit of moisture is the delay one and the delay two. And I guess maybe a little chorus if you kind of want to wrap that into that thing as well. Oh, last thing before we leave here. These effects going here, so these are not going to be the same. So for the flute, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be about 61 or so percent. However, for the noise, I wanted to give that almost all the way 98, 99, 98 degrees, whatever, you know. So anyway, moving on from that, I did want the uh, the FX to be completely soaked for the noise stuff because that way we get a lot extra delays that can get sent to the reverb. So it makes the sound a little bit bigger in that sense. So I thought I'd mention that before we go here and... Seeing if we didn't change anything here that we need to talk about. I think we are all good in that sense. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much this flute in a nutshell. I think the main things to really drive home is that any type of woodwind thing or flutes or something like that with air, we kind of generally want to start off maybe with a triangle for our base shape and then kind of mold from there because, you know, think of the main tonality is going to be triangle and then you want to have a little bit of motion whether that's a little bit of pitch changes maybe you can do that with an lfo or kind of you know kind of kind of cheated a little bit that way and then you can use ring modulation to kind of control the the amplitude in that sense so it's kind of really it's not going to be exact because when people breathe out it's not going to be an exact pressure you're not going to breathe into a pressure gauge it's not going to read the exact same number every single time so you kind of want a little of those inconsistencies so try to break it down in as much different things as you can so yeah with that being said hopefully you learned something if you did please let me know in the comments below i love hearing from you guys and i uh, will see you in the next video thanks for watching